it's time to paint up the adorable taxis for the Leagues of Otan, the Sagittar. As usual, I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step build, but I will cover the highlights. The kit gives you three options for weapons, and it's surprisingly self-contained to each one, so you could actually swap them out. I built it into the complete vehicle and the three different weapon sets, the missile, the high last cannon, and the MATR autocannon. The instructions say that these weapons are press fit. Cool. Let's give it a little shake and see. Oh no. Well, I guess I have to magnetize this. I'll use the same jig that I used in the Hearthguard video. I use 4x1mm round magnets. These are available on Amazon. I apply it to one polarity on the jig. This polarity will go on the vehicle side. Use super glue to secure the magnet. The hole is exactly 4mm in diameter, so you might have to push on it a little bit to make it fit. On all the weapons, you need to remove this nib right over here. Very carefully use a blade and cut it off. Trim the surface down until it's completely flat so that super glue is able to work on it. Now, using the other polarity on the jig, apply another magnet and then super glue it onto the bottom of the weapon base. Once the super glue is completely cured on all the parts, go ahead and try it out to make sure everything works. You'll now be able to freely change between the three weapons depending on the game you're playing. Onward to painting. I'll be priming everything in black. I make sure that the black goes into every recess and corner of the model. Don't forget to prime the weapons as well. Next, mix some gunmetal metallics into 50% of Flow Improver. Stir it up real good, add it to your airbrush, and spray it onto anything that you want to look metallic. I sprayed this on the suspension components and onto all the tubes all around the vehicle. It also goes on all six wheels. This technique really saves time because you don't have to brush the silver into hard to reach places. Now I switch to white primer. This I will use to zenithal highlight areas that are not silver. You have to use fairly careful sprays of the airbrush to make sure it doesn't overspray onto the silver areas. But if you do overspray, don't worry about it. You can always brush over with silver later. Now it's time for brushwork. I start with army green, which I put in my wet palette and add a little bit of water to to make it nice and runny. With the paint properly thinned down, use a broad brush and green is my secondary color, which goes in the middle of the vehicle. Whatever color you choose as your secondary color will go in these areas as well. I chose this method over airbrushing because it gives you a little bit more control of the amount of color that you lay down. It also prevents overspray into the silver areas. Don't forget the side shields on the weapon mounts. My army's primary color is yellow, so I use Zealot Yellow, which goes on all the side armor panels. If you've chosen another color for your primary, it will go on these panels. Speed paints are great for this because it easily lays down on very large areas. The same color goes on the upper torsos as well. I switched to Grim Black Speed Paint, which works really well in the cockpit areas. It seeps into the deepest recesses without too much brushwork. I also put it on the gloves and on the boots and pads of the driver. The front bolters get some black as well. And black goes on the three magnetized weapons. I used hardened leather speed paint on the restraining straps, the packs at the back of the Sagittar, the seat backs, and the helmet or the hair of the driver. I used just a little bit of Crusader skin for the face of the driver. 
I switch to metallic gunmetal and I touch up all the overspray that I had done earlier. I also pick out the little details and the arms of the LCOG unit. The buckles on the restraints get some silver too. The luggage rack gets some silver and so does the pickaxe. The muzzles of the twin bolters are silver and the magnetized weapons have silver parts as well. I use radium turbo dork paint for the head of the LCOG. I then switch to electric blue acrylic paint which goes on all the screens. The driver's goggles, the rear viewport, and the lights in the rear. I use a random combination of jungle green and lava orange to mark all the little dials and buttons inside the cockpits. I use orange and green on the various marker lights around the vehicle as well. Blood red acrylic paint goes on the missile warheads. and on the packs in the middle of the backpacks. Dark stone acrylic paint works really well for the tires. Now onward to the glass elements of the model, these ones here. What I do is I use some white primer the one that you use for your airbrush is just fine. And I go ahead and very carefully with a medium brush, line all the lines on the canopies. This allows the paint that comes afterwards to adhere to the surface. I switch to my secondary color, Army Green, and I carefully follow the lines that I had traced earlier with the primer. If you varnish your models, and you should, you should use a brush-on matte varnish like this from Army Painter. What you would do is just trace on top of the secondary color that you had laid down earlier. This seals that color into place and prevents it from scraping off. Be careful not to overbrush onto the glass. I next wash the model with Strong Tone. I apply this in the suspension areas, and also I trace the feature lines on all the armor panels with it. I apply this wash on the luggage rack and I darken the areas inside the cockpits with the wash as well. The metallic roll cage around the vehicle all get strong tone. And so do the muzzles of the bolters. For the driver's eyes, I use the usual application of white in the sockets, followed by black on a toothpick for the pupils. Next, onto decals. Almost done. Pick the decals that you want to use and work on no more than five at a time to prevent them from drying out. Dip them in water for a few seconds, and then using Microset, brush onto the area you want to apply the decal then transferring the decal onto your brush and then onto the surface, push the decals into position with the brush as needed. After this step, you should consider varnishing a model with an aerosol varnish. However, do not use the aerosol varnish on the glass canopies. To attach the canopy onto the model, use this glass glue from Loctite, not regular super glue or plastic glue. 
This glue doesn't fog up the glass, which is great for this application. And just like that, the Sagittar is all done. A venerable troop transport and weapon platform is now ready for battle. With all three weapons magnetized, you're able to change them out from battle to battle depending on who your opponent is. Thank you so much for watching this fourth installment of the Leagues of Tan 2 week series. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the final three installments. Happy hobbying, holding grudges, and I will see you soon.